Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at the 2021 AMC 10B Problem 22. Ang, Ben, and Jasmine each have five blocks colored red, blue, yellow, white, and green. And there are five empty boxes. Each of the people randomly and independently, so they're not independent, no, they're just completely random. They're not independent based on Ben. Ang is not dependent on Ben or Jasmine, just random irrelevant of the other people. So basically, they're of the other two people and they're putting blocks in each box. So we want to find the probability that at least one block receives all three blocks of the same color. So basically what this is saying is that there can be one block with three blocks of the same color, two blocks with three blocks of the same color, three blocks, same color, three, three bo boxes with three blocks of the same color, four boxes with four blocks of the, with blocks of the same color, or five boxes with blocks of the same color. So how can we count those possibilities? One way is that we can well, do casework, of course, but I think that would be a little bit complicated because then you have to subtract the cases from, oh, we, we have to make sure that we, can, we don't have two blocks common. That would involve some extra stuff. So another way, which I think is a little bit, maybe a little bit easier, is that we can use the principle of inclusion and exclusion. By the way, if you don't know what that is, you can check out the numerous AMC 8 and AMC 10 12 videos on this channel for what it is. So principle of inclusion and exclusion. Is there, how can we apply it here? Knowing, to, knowing a technique is not enough to actually apply it. So how do we apply it here? Well, the thing is, we want to find it such that three blocks of the same color in one box. So let's just count the number of ways where you have three blocks of the same color in one box, and then subtract the number of ways where we have three blocks of the same color in more than one box, and just keep repeating that. We have to use actually the general form of principal inclusion and exclusion, not the two or three cases, but the general form, which is a little bit tricky, but we'll, it's good. So basically what we have to do is you have to basically think about how we can apply that here. So let's just go step by step. Okay. So how many ways are there? Let's say we have, let's say we have Aang, Ben, and Jasmine. And let's say we've got five blocks of the colors, red, white, blue, yellow, and green. So we have got five colors, three people, and three, three blocks total per box. Sorry, not three blocks, total per box. Yeah. So basically, what we have to do here is that we have to see that from, or let's say that these are boxes one through five. Two, three, four, five. Instead of doing that, I think that would be a little bit easier to understand. So we have boxes one through five. We've got three people. So basically, what we have to see is that Let's first start at the first step. In box one, or let's say if, without loss of generality, let's assume box one gets three yellow blocks. How many ways? So even though we want probability, I think it's just gonna be easier just to divide it by at the end. So why, why, why? So basically, what's how many ways are there for this to happen? There are going to be equal to four factorial cubed because there are four remaining positions to rearrange, that can be done in four factorial ways. And three people, so four factorial, we have to cube that quantity because there's three people. Each of them has four factorial ways to arrange their four remaining blocks, okay? Okay, so now we got four factorial cubed out of the way. So now what, what other factors are there? Well, this is not the only way. We don't have to necessarily have why, why, why. We can also have maybe red, 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 or blue, blue, blue. Basically, the thing I'm trying to say is that it doesn't matter which color you have, they each contribute a new way. So we, we have to actually multiply by five, choose one. Because out of the five colors, we choose one of them, like in this case, yellow, to be to be the color that's gonna be in the box. And the reason I'm saying five, choose one here is because as you see later, as we go into the PIE, it's gonna be five, choose two, and five, choose three. So hopefully that'll make more sense. So five, choose one ways to choose which color we're using. But there's also five, choose one ways to choose which box we have. Because we have five boxes, we can choose any one of the boxes for the whatever color of the three thing to go. Okay, so now we've got a value. And then we also have to multiply it by one factorial. And this one factorial is just one. The reason one factorial is because one factorial is just one, so it's not really adding anything, but basically we have one yellow and then we have to choose one of the boxes. So there's only one factorial ways to pair up 
the one color in one box we have. Don't worry if you don't this for now. You'll see later on why I'm saying this because as we go future, we're going to multiply by two factorial and three factorial. So let's move on to the second step in PIE. Two, the overlaps of two. We subtract the overlaps from two. So like when you have maybe like y, y, y for one, and then maybe we have something like g, g, g for two. So basically, how many ways is there to do this? Well, just like earlier, we've got three positions extra here. Three factorial ways to rearrange them. Three factorial cubed, right? You have to multiply that by five choose two. Because, of course, the reason five choose two is because we have five boxes and we choose two of them. Let's see, boxes one and two in this case to be yellow and green. And then we also choose two boxes or two colors to be, let's say, let the, two boxes and two colors. So five choose two times five choose two. Because we have five choose two ways to choose two boxes and five choose two ways to choose two colors. And is that it? No, because now let's say we have two colors, Y and G, two boxes, one and two. We've choose two boxes. We've chosen two colors. There's going to be two factorial ways to arrange them, map up the pairing. Because Y can go to one or box one or two. G can go to box one or two. There's two possibilities, two or two factorial possibilities here. So it's going to be that. And then we have to add back two factorial cube. In this case, it's, just, it's very similar from here. You have to add back two factorial cube because now let's see we have y. I'm going to go a little bit faster in this part because it's kind of re repetitive. We have two factorial because we have two ways to rearrange these two and then for all three colors times five, two, three because we have five box positions. We choose three of them. Let's see in this case, one, two, and three. And then times five, two, and three because we out of the three colors, we, out of the five colors, we choose three of them. Now let's say we have y g w and then let's give one two three there's going to be three factorial ways to match them up and then let's see let's also subtract also let's subtract one factorial cubed one factorial cube and this is just the last case four when you have four because one factorial i'm just saying it so let's see, now it's going to be um let's see what other color we not used we have not used red so let's say red so then we're going to be red, that red, red. It's going to be one possibility there. One, one times one times one, one cubed times five choose four, right? Same thing. We choose four colors out of the five colors. We choose four box numbers out of the five box numbers. And then out of the four, now we've chosen four box colors. We've chosen four box colors. There's four factorial ways to arrange them together. Because we have, if you think about it, we have Y, Z, W, R in this case, and one, two, three, four. I mean, it can be anything really. So then there's going to be four choices for where y can go. y can be one, two, three, or four. So one, two, three, four choices. Let's say it chooses three. Now three is gone. Now we have three choices for where g can go. And we covered a similar setup in the AMC math comes class, if you remember from that. So we have one, two, three. And then same thing. And then now let's say two is gone. Then we have two choices. Then one choice. So four times three times two times one in this case. So four factorial. So lastly, what do we add? I mean, it's pretty similar. Zero factorial cubed times five choose five, times five choose five, and five colors, five boxes, which one really, times five factorial, five factorial ways to pair them together. And then let's add them all up. If we add them all up, what do we get? Well, we're not gonna add them all up actually, because that's kind of bad. So instead of adding them all up, we really don't, we wanna find this quantity, whatever this is, divided by, wow, this is really a big expression here, divided by five factorial cubed, because five factorial for each of the three people, How do we evaluate this expression? So let's just write out some terms here. It's a little bit messy, but we'll get through it if we go through it. So it's going to be equal to this. Is, this this first. Let me just move it a little bit so it's more space. Let's just move it. Let's say this is equal to twenty four times twenty four times twenty four because four factorial is twenty four. To memorize that, five five times five. This will be equal to six times six times six times ten times ten times two. This will be equal to two times two times two times 10 times 10 times six. This will be equal to one times five times five times 24. Because four factorial is 24. This will be equal to zero factorial. Remember, it's one. Because the number of ways of arranging zero objects is just one. So one times five, one times one times 120. And then notice that five factorial cube is just equal to five factorial 
120 times 120 times 120. So we just want to send the sum of these terms divided by 120 times 120 minus 120. What we can do is we can cancel 120 from all our expressions. We cancel 120, 120, 120, 120, because 5 times 24 is 120, and we cancel the 5 times 24. Cancel 120 from the last term. We cancel 10 times 2 times 6 from this term. We cancel 10 times 2 times 6 from this term. So we're canceling out the product of 120 from all our sums that we need to add up. We need to add all these up, so we just cancel 120 from the denominator and all our sums. And then we cancel out 120 from this beginning term. And now it's a little bit messy, but let's just make sure just make sure not to make a calculation error here. So 24 times 24 times 5 is just 576 times 5. So remember, 24 squared is 576. So 576 times 5 is just going to be equal to 2880. So, so from here we can see that 2880. 2880 plus... 6 times 6 times 10 is 360, plus 2 times 2 times 10 is 40, plus 5, plus 1. Okay, Whew. this is a long expression here. We have to divide all this by 120 squared. Okay, let's do this. What's 2880 plus 360? Plus, so this is going to be equal to... This... Is going to just be equal to 46. Oh, sorry, it should be minus plus here, not plus 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 plus. We're not summing them all. Remember, we're doing this minus this plus this minus this plus this. So minus this plus this minus this, and then plus this. So this is what we really want to be evaluating. Okay, so now this is what we have to evaluate. So let's just see that 40 minus 5 plus 1 is just going to be equal to. 36, 2880 minus 360 is 2520. So, so the sum of the values is 2556, five, and 120 squared is, oh, this is going to be messy. 120 squared is 120 times 120, which when then from there, we can then simplify it to get that. It's going to be 1, 2, 7, 8, 60. Why did I make up such a long calculation problem? 6, 3, 9, 30. This will be 2, 1, 3, 10. And from here we can see that 2, 1, 3 is just, we can cancel out 3 from this. Okay, so then we're left with 71 over 40 times 10, which is 400. So 71 or 400, it gives an answer of 471. And that is the solution for this problem. D is the correct answer. And the PI, PI part of it was nice, but I really did not like the computation part. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Oh, and also just to recap the quick steps here. The main steps were that we first said that, okay, we want to use PIE, and then we did what, four factorial cubed times five choose one. So we just take it piece by piece. So four choose one factorial cubed, 4 factorial cubed times 5 choose 1 times 5 choose 1 times 1 factorial. We choose, remember, 1 for the boxes, 1 for the ball, 1 for the color, 1 factorial ways to map it up, 4 factorial ways to arrange the other terms. We have similar expansions out for the rest of them. We add them all up. We do some really nasty arithmetic, and then we get our answer. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Also, if you know of any alternate solutions, please comment down below what they are, as I'm sure we'll all love to hear them. It's possible that there might even be some better solutions than this one. See you all next time. Bye!